Information and Network Technology in the year of 2018. Both of these courses have been run under GTO GSET with the vision of providing excellent technical knowledge uh, and preparing the competent manpower in the respective specialization. From this academic year, we are starting one year certification course of post graduation diploma in data science. All these courses run under GTO GSET have intake of 30 students. Now, dear participants, our today's expert is Mr. Virendra Patil, sir. Sir is pursuing his PhD from Sardar Vallabhbhai Patel National Institute of Technology. He has more than 10 years of experience in the academic and industrial experience. He has published more than 12 research papers in various reputed journals and conferences. He has completed, uh, completed his research from the prestigious organization named CSIR, Central Electronics Engineering and Research Institute, Pilani Rajasthan, and I Square IT Pune, etc. He has done projects on various topics like uh, underwater autonomous vehicle, Neo Goa, Martian rover design, small, uh, small satellite development in collaboration with IZ, investigation on effect of configuration of PDEP in Pico satellite, IRNSS, tourist route and navigation system, IRNSS for sports, IRNSS, uh, ionospheric grid model for better acquisition, implementation of acquisition and tracking GPS baseband module for India's forthcoming GPS L5 band technology, crop, uh, crop production estimation and monitoring using GIS and IRNSS and many more even we can't uh, count. So today he will conduct lecture on global navigation satellite system. And I would like to request you all the participants to please keep your mic and camera off during the session. And if so permits, you can ask the question during the session or at the end of the session. So, Virendra sir, it is really an honor to welcome you. Uh, sir, over to you. Okay. Good afternoon. Good morning, students and faculties. I am starting my presentation. Okay, first of all, I shall introduce myself. Uh, I'm Virendra Patel. I did my bachelor's from LD College of Engineering and I did my master's in satellite communication and space system from IIIT Pune. And uh, after that, I pursued for uh, research assistant in uh, CSIR series where I did my master's project. And uh, then I uh, teach in uh, college for four to five years. Then I started my full-time PhD in SVNIT Surat. So today I am going to uh, introduce you about the global navigation satellite system. These are the contents of my presentation, background, history of navigation, enabling technology and objectives, GNSS basics, DOP accuracy, error sources, NAVIC, and there are many more. Navigation. What is navigation? Navigation is a field of study that focuses on the process of monitoring and controlling the movement of a craft, aircraft, your uh, car, motorcycle, etc. from one place to another. It is just, we can say that you are moving from point A to point B and something is guiding you. It is navigating you. Okay. Now there are basically uh, in a field of nav navigation, there are four basic categories. Those are land navigation, marine navigation, aeronautic navigation, and space navigation. Now, uh, if we wonder uh, in early days how the position were estimated. So if we go, uh, go back in 14th to 16th century, they were using Egyptian groma, cross turf, and astro table for determining the latitude. They were using transverse board, and dead reckoning to determine the velocity and compass for estimating the position and direction. Now, after that, in the 17th to 20th century, they were using chronometer, they were using sextant. Using both this chronometer and sextant, uh, they were able to determine the longitude. Now, further, they move on to the compass rows. And later, the radio communication as well as the radar technologies were introduced during the World War One and World War Two. 
Now after that, the land-based radio positioning was started, which is known as LORAN. And after that, the space-based radio positioning started, uh, which started from transit and finally it was GPS. Okay. Now, if we go for the satellite navigation posi positioning system, how it started. So oh. early. Hello. Sorry to interrupt you, sir, but, but uh, actually our uh, slides are not moving right now. Slides are not moving. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, wait, ma'am. I I shall again connect. Is it visible, ma'am? Rutika, ma'am, is it visible now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, now okay. it is visible. Okay, fine, ma'am. Is it moving now, ma'am? Yes, sir. It is moving. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. Now, uh, the satellite navigation positioning system started early from uh, the Russian satellite Sputnik, then the GP, uh, transit satellite, which was developed by US Army, then sector. Tisklon and Tisigda, which was developed by Russia, and finally the time machine, which was developed by USA, and using that time machine series, the GPS was started in 1983. Now, what are the technologies, or we can say, uh, what are the basic requirements for GNSS? Means there should be something uh, which uh, helps you for uh, enabling satellite navigation technology. So what are they? Those are three parameters. Those are stable space platforms. It means we should be able to predict the satellite position in space within the vicinity of one, centi one centimeter or greater in a millimeter. Second is we should have the ultra stable clocks. Now, uh, uh, for ultra st stable clocks, the cesium clock, rubidium clock, hydrogen clocks, they are used in currently developed satellites. And they have the uh, stability of one part in 10 to the power 15. It means the clock has a deviation of one second in millions of years, hundreds of millions of years. Now, this is the stability of clock you can see here. The third is the integrated circuits. Now, integrated circuits means there should be compact, low, light, inexpensive receivers, which uh, can be a dongle, uh, a smart watch. You can have those low cost devices and uh, you can have, you can access the free to air signal and uh, you can estimate the position. Okay. Now, the main, what is the main uh, GNSS performance objective? Uh, sorry, it, sir. Yes, sorry, sir. But, uh, it is not moving yet. No, I, I have not moved. I have not moved the slide, ma'am. Okay, 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 sir. I have not moved the slide, ma'am. Okay. okay, okay. Now, uh, what what the uh, GNSS performance objective is to provide the position within an accuracy of one to ten meters. Also, it should provide the velocity accuracy of zero to point one meter per second, and also the time. Now, the basic GNSS performance objective is to give the PNT value or PNT services, means position, navigation, and time. Now, these services should be instantaneously, continuously, and globally. Also, it should be cheap. Cheap in a sense, it should be free to wear signal. Anybody on ground or above the surface should be able to use this GNSS signal for determining his or her position. Okay, so these are the basic three GNSS performance objective. Now, uh, for any number of users, uh, the GNSS signal should not be restricted. 
this means the main performance objective of all navigation system satellite system whether it can be gps glonass galileo bedo qzss our navic system it should have very good it should have very good accuracy and it should be working 24 cross 7 okay if you have any doubts you can ask unmute yourself yourself and you can ask no issue now here uh, you can see the different satellite systems orbiting around the earth you can see beidou system which is developed by china you can see the gps system which is developed by G, uh, uh, usa irnss or navic system developed by india glonass system which is developed by russia uh, qzss system developed by japan galileo system which is developed by europe now this is the same which i have said now here you can see the G, uh, gnss satellites which are covering their coverage their launch their status and number of satellites in orbit as you can see uh, gps started at present they are having 32 satellites in orbit they are having six orbits and in each orbit they are having four satellites the rest of the satellites they have kept as spare if certain satellites uh have certain problem or if the life span of the satellite is completed then there's that a particular satellite is deorbited and the new spare satellite is parked on the sp uh, same place where the previous satellite was parked next is glonass they are they are having the constellation of 24 satellites they are having three orbits and in each orbit they are having eight satellites then comes the galileo galileo also are having three orbits and they are having number of satellites 28 beidou initially beidou which is developed by china they were having the uh, regional navigation system but then they uh, progressed over the uh, global navigation global navigation it means they are having certain satellites for uh, regional navigation certain satellites for global navigation and you will and i will tell you that they have one or two satellites in high elliptical orbit no country as such has kept uh, their satellite in high elliptical orbit but only china are having those satellites and qzr as a satellites uh, they are developed by japan they are having one geo stationary satellites and three geo synchronous satellites and our india's irnss navic system we have a constellation geometry of seven satellite consisting of three geo stationary satellites and four geo synchronous satellites uh, out of which uh, satellite 1a clock was uh, having problem then we have sent another satellite uh, on the replacement of 1a but still uh, uh, isro has developed certain technologies that though that satellite 1a is not giving uh, is is been used in positioning techniques but uh, people are utilizing that satellites for uh, giving messages signals means uh, along the coast guard of uh, south india the message technologies are uh, provided by this irnss one s satellite and fishermen are using this services it means that uh, on they are they can be alerted that on which particular area the fishes are more so they don't have to roam around and they will particularly go, go to that particular area and they can uh, get the fishes uh, sorry yes, sir, sir but uh, yes. yet it is not moving sir now it is i have moved uh, you can see sir, don't operate in a, a slide show mode otherwise it will not uh, visible uh i shall not operate the slide mode slide show mode yes sir sir make it uh, full screen okay okay fine is it now now it is visible so please try to uh, move it then i can say you something i am i am moving ma'am no sir it is not visible I'm not wait, moving right now wait ma'am i shall again reconnect ma'am wait ma'am okay uh, yeah. present now
now it is moving ma'am yeah. yes sir please try once again so i can say yes yes, yes yes definitely definitely yes sir. moving ma'am okay fine yeah. ma'am now there are basically three components in gns system one is the space segment one is the user segment and one is the uh, data segment now in space segment the gps satellites which are gps or gns satellites which are in space are considered those satellites transmit the signals to ground now uh, at the ground station ground segment what it does the satellite signals which are received from the space segment set gns or any satellite navigation satellite are continuously 24 by 7 monitored it also monitors whether the satellite is properly in orbit the speed of the satellite is proper or not and if there is some problem regarding the position or the speed of the satellite then the correction signals are transmitted from master control station to the data uploading station and data uploading station uploads the gns correct uh, correction signal to the satellite to particular satellite now that particular satellite is again uh, parked in its uh, desired orbit and again the speed also is uh, control uh, thrusters and uh, gyro segments are used for this controlling segment now the third is the user segment user segments means us we as a civilian are using gns signals for our day to day routine like uh, for example these days you can see uh, you, you might have you people have must have been ordering your online food from zomato or swiggy now you can see what it shows it shows your uh, delivery person he or she is delivering uh, the food to your doorstep and uh, uh, you can see that here the gis and gnss technology both are integrated so on the same screen you you are seeing map which is gis and you are uh, getting the position of the user with respect to your home that is your gnss technology okay means in user segment we are using this technologies this is a part of the gnss components now types of gns signals now uh, the first type of gns uh, initially there was only l1 band which is having the frequency of 1575.42 megahertz which is which was used by gps later on they have uh, upgraded the frequencies for l2 l2c l5 then uh, for uh, galileo they are having e e5 see it is if they have named as e5 but it is basically 157.42 megahertz only now secondly uh, uh, the safety of life came into picture so uh, later on they started giving the correction and measurement signals to the user along with the uh, basic signal which is transmitted from the G gns satellite our our navic system it is having the frequency band of l5 and s band now here comes dop dop means dilution of precision now to estimate the position of the user the geometry of the satellite is uh, fairly considered means how far the geometry of the satellite is there with respect to that only your uh, position is estimated and it is recognized whether uh, it is more accurate or not so here in figure 4 you can see all the satellite geometry four satellite geometry they are clustered very close enough so what happens here the satellite cluster is close enough so uh, your position estimate will be poor so you are because you are having a poor dilution of precision yeah now dilution of precision will is having a values ranging from 0 to it increases up to 6 7 10 it do, doesn't go till 10 if uh, there is a uh, there is no visibility of the satellite then only your dop value will be in, increased now as your dop value is nearer to 0 it means that your position is very good it is accurate position but if your dop value certainly moves away from 0 that means that your position is not not that much accurate okay now in dop there are h dop uh, uh, v dop t dop timing dop vertical dop horizontal dop okay these are different uh, dilution of precision categories which comes into picture 
now in figure 5 you can see the satellite geometry is far enough so here uh, your estimation of position is quite good now here in figure 6 though the satellite visibility is very no sorry the satellite geometry is very good but there is a problem in visibility you can see the building is there and you can also see the there is a uh, tree out of there so your position is not estimated in figure 7 the geometry of satellite is along in one side so this is this also gives you poor drop okay now just imagine if we consider any only one satellite system suppose we consider only gps satellite system and uh, we are estimating uh, our position in any densely populated area or any uh, high between high rise buildings suppose for example uh, in ahmedabad if i would say if you go from really if you are traveling in relief road or if you are uh, moving in any uh, pole uh, i mean in any chalk uh, in uh, crossing from relief road so there you will be see there are very narrow roads and uh, buildings are very high so in that particular area your uh, certain uh, your satellite signals will not be captured so what happens now so if there is only one technology you are using gps so minimum satellites required to estimate your position are four so now if two or three satellites are only visible so your position will not estimate so in that case gnss comes into picture that you can use different navigation different navigation systems to establish your position though you are in any area okay that's why gnss is used these days now uh, these are the navigation satellite system uh, and uh, what in all blocks block means particular category of satellites okay particular category of satellites suppose for gps ir iir was the first block now it has been replicated by iif okay so what happens initially the satellites were having only l1 band okay and every satellite has a lifespan of 10 to 15 years so you cannot just uh, uh, move out the satellite if you have developed any new technology and you cannot move out the satellite and place the new one so what happens as the lifespan of the satellite is uh, um, finished so the new satellites are introduced with a new frequency band so at present most of the satellites are of gps are uh, of iif band which are having uh, l1 l2 p l2c l5 l3 and also l4 okay same way it goes for glonass beidou uh, beidou 3 galileo qzss and for irss in our irss navic system also we are having at present the frequency band of l5 and s but later on it uh, isro is also upgrading it with l1 band so there is a compatibility between uh, other navi other countries navigation system with the same frequency band okay now uh, it is uh, the following slide gives you the information about the multi gnss mgex system what it means it means suppose if you want to uh, first i will tell you what is mgex M uh, mgex is a multi gnss system it means all over the all over the world there they have placed certain gnss stations it continuously monitors like uh, 24 cross 7 and from the day it started it monitors the signals uh, transmitted from the satellites and along with the signal it also monitors the weather condition weather forecast everything so if you want to do any certain survey or if you want to do uh, if you suppose you want to do uh, atmospheric study so you can collect the previous years data from this mgx station and you can have a uh, post processing uh, studies on those data and you can also estimate the uh, future predictions using ml and ai using this multi gnss mgx system okay this uh, uh, your uh, btech or mtech students they can have uh, they can look into this system and do the projects in this area in this domain i will tell you later there are so many things you can do from here in india uh, mgx station is in bangalore iisc bangalore and in uh, Hyderabad and in uh, one in Uttarakhand IIRS 
now uh, gnss signals and observations so ambiguity comes into picture time offset interoperability now interoperability means uh, it switching switching between bands then satellite interfrequency biases then ins new signals uh, which is l1 which is coming into picture same way it goes for galileo gps and bedo uh, this is more interesting the device which you are seeing here is a very low cost gnss receiver it comes around uh, 20 uh, 20 nahi no, 16 to 20000 okay and uh, you can use this low cost gnss receiver uh, and you can do wonders it is not necessary that uh, you especially uh, for gps to uh, not gps uh, civil students civil students environment students architect students uh, you can use this receiver and uh, you can have a post processing or real time estimation for and uh, for uh, uh, determining precise position for determining precise altitude or uh, uh, suppose for uh, civil engineering uh, you can also use this device for gis applications also this comes in a bundle of two uh, two uh, modules which one is the base and one is rover so one base is kept alongside uh it is a stationary and uh, ro rover which you can move around and uh, the base station gives you the correction signals to the rover and likewise your uh, position is more precisely established in uh, millimeter to centimeter level okay now this is the reference system now what is reference system A reference system means uh, you if you are using any technology gps glonass bedo but while you are uh, 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 locating your latitude and longitude on map so it requires a reference system like what kind of reference system suppose for india whether you are using uh, gps glonass or uh, any any technology you are using any gnss technology you are using but your reference system should be wgs 84 wgs stands for world geodetic system and 84 because it was started in the year 1984 so uh, our irns navic system also is having a reference frame of wgs 84 why we need a reference frame because as you know that earth is not in a circular shape okay it is obloid it is in a obloid shape so to compensate certain area certain positions there uh, this wgs84 has clustered a frame and using that frame you can estimate your position on map very precisely so uh, in that for that purpose the reference system is used here you can see the blue is the geoid which is the shape of the earth okay the the global datum it is wgs84 which is in the red Shape, red color and you can see that it is uh, perfectly fitting not perfectly fitting but it is uh, likewise which is maximum fitting the ge main geoid level okay and uh, one thing uh, your position wh whatever you are obtaining from any uh, receivers any gns receivers it is always in the form of main sea level msl msl level Uh, the best example i can give you uh, whenever you travel by train and you see the note, uh, board of the station it is painted in yellow and black okay beside that there is always written that this board or this sign is this much meters above msl level you can have a look whenever you are traveling in train just have a look below uh, below that place it is always written okay now these are the gnss positioning techniques these are the formulas i think we should go and not go in this ha huh. now this is the gnss receiver station this is in our nit we are having uh, three receivers uh, and we are uh, we are provided uh, receivers by space application center isro and uh, we are con continuously monitoring uh, irns navic and gps signals 24 cross 7 since past 5 years
and uh, we uh, many of my colleagues are doing uh, research areas in uh, ja anti jamming anti spoofing then mitigation techniques for navic receivers then uh, ionospheric modeling tropospheric modeling this all are been uh, studied and are, uh, people are doing research in our institute uh this is the navic signal structure our navic signal is having a frequency band of 1176.45 megahertz okay and we are having uh l, l this is basically the l5 band okay now this is the navic modulation technique i don't think we should go in this now i will show you uh, a simulation in which you can easily see that how the position of the user is been calculated using any gnss system okay give me one minute uh rutika ma'am is the screen visible to you yes sir it is visible okay fine now here you can see this is the two dimensional view of our navic system okay here you can see there are satellites irnss 1a 1b 1c 1d 1e 1f 1g 1h which was launched but unfortunately unfortunately the heat shield was not removed so still it is orbiting in space and again replace on the replacement of that satellite one i was launched okay now i am running the simulation you can see how the satellite our navic satellites we are having three geostationary satellites and we are having five at present five geosynchronous satellites okay now just have a look madam can you see the simulation rudhika madam yes sir the satellites are moving shall i increase the speed or is it okay ma'am uh so it is okay okay fine students and faculties here you can see how the satellites our navic satellites are uh, moving in space our satellites are 35000 kilometers above the earth surface and we are having a geometry of three geostationary satellites and four geosynchronous satellites okay now here you can see i have marked surat and we are receiving the we are receiving continuously the navic signals l5 band and s band and on receiving those signals we are estimating the position okay this was your two dimensional view now i will show you the three dimensional view how how it looks now this is your three dimensional view i will increase the speed so our navigation satellites navic satellites are continuously uh, giving the signals over the uh, indian region and 1500 kilometers on all the sides here you can see uh, three satellites are in geostationary and five are in geosynchronous because they are ha they have given an inclination angle for those five satellites okay now i will show you the graph of visibility okay now here you can see what this graph shows on y axis you can see the number of satellites 1a 1i 1g 1f 1e 1d 1c 1b okay and on y uh, x axis uh, it is showing the time 
now you can see continuously the colored line from starting to end what it means it means that the signal from that particular satellite is continuously being received by the user at present in surat it is continuously re received okay there are no gaps why because we are having a system, navigation system of geo stationary and geo synchronous satellites now i will show you the gps system it will give take 1 to 1.5 minutes just till it uh, starts i will show the presentation okay so here you can see uh, the here this you can see the two dimensional view of uh, gps satellites uh, you can see it is very clustered because they are having 24 satellites okay in six orb orbits here you can see there are six orbits and in each orbit there are uh, four satellites okay i will show you this thing in simulation also now this is for glonass they are having three orbits and in each orbit they are having eight satellites likewise they are giving the uh, nav uh, transmitting the navigation signal from space and are uh, been used by russia this is the galileo system okay this is of europe this is beidou system here see here in beidou you can it you can in this 2d view you can see that there is a regional shape you can see here the eight shape that is a uh, regional system they are having and the sinusoidal wave type you can see those are uh, global satellites which are used providing the navigation system throughout the world now this is your beidou system here you can see the purple and yellow line okay that is the high el high elliptical orbit which i was talking and they have placed certain satellites in heo high elliptical orbit now this is for the qzss uh, here you can see that qzs3 which is stationary and uh, rest 3 are in uh, geo synchronous motion because uh, as you can see japan is a very hilly terrain and uh, Uh, if you see on map, uh, for uh, suppose, uh, I guess EC EC electronics people, uh, you uh, you must be knowing about the Molniya orbit. What is Molniya orbit? That if you want uh, uh, a particular satellite to be visible in uh, in a in an area, uh, so that orbit should be highly elliptical and uh, geosynchronous. So likewise for this QZSS, they have this technique they have used here. now this is the three dimensional view for the qzss satellites okay here you can see only one geo stationary and three geo synchronous i will see if uh, the simulation has started yes it started rutika madam is it visible yes sir okay fine now here you can see this is a geometry of gps satellites okay 
now it is very clustered because there are 24 satellites now i will run the simulation you can see what happens i will decrease the speed see now here uh, i guess if you can see uh, locate surat and you can see there are red lines okay now those red lines you can see that uh, when the satellite is in the visibility or it comes in a vicinity uh, of our position at that time the signals are been received okay and as it goes far away the, that red line will be broken okay i this you will be able to clearly understand using the graph plot i will show you now here you can see this is surat and uh, you can see the satellite orbiting in space gps satellites orbiting in space okay now i will show the graph plot this is very interesting why on y axis again there are gps satellites okay and on x axis is the time now here you can you you will see there is a breakage in line it is not continuous why because the gps satellites are 22000 kilometers above the earth surface and are in leo orbit the satellite is rotating one uh, rotating the earth uh, in a 23 hour 59 minutes and 56 seconds okay approx so you can see that uh, the visibility here it is not continuous because uh, the gps satellites are not geostationary or geosynchronous so what happens uh, um, we require minimum four satellites so here you, but here you can see that on any particular point on y axis you can see that there is uh, no such uh, gap that there is no satellites visible you can find out you can uh, move on i guess i can zoom if is possible on x axis if you can see on uh, and uh, see this number of set, uh, see the satellites there is no place left or no place empty that which is vertically empty space there are certain or some satellites which are visible on all all available time okay so likewise the gps technology is working now i will show you the whole constellation gnss constellation how it looks like till then i will we will go for uh, ppt ha huh, see uh, here you can see uh, this is the two dimensional view of all the constellation whether it is gps glonass galileo beido qzss navic all constellation so you can see how clustered it is now one thing you can uh, uh found you can see from here that if you use gnss technology and if you want to uh, do any project or if you want to do certain things using gnss technology you can develop any good product uh, which is beneficial for the societal development using this gnss technology you can this use this gnss technology in either in farming agriculture in any aspect of engineering whether it is uh, mechanical automobile civil environment any any engineering you can in computer science it any engineering domain you can use this okay now this is the three dimensional view of all the clustered gnss satellites okay i will go for simulation if it came i guess still it is not came uh, 
I guess I will have to create one, but it will take time. So I have shown you in the figure because we have some amount of time only left. So I guess we will complete with the PPT. We will go with the PPT. See here, you, this is the cluster in 3D view. Okay, same way uh, as I showed you previously for Navic and GPS. Likewise, this constellation is for all the navigation satellites. Okay. Now here you can see uh, Ublocks GNSS. This uh, it is the same low cost GNSS receivers which are uh, available in the market, and you can uh, use this receiver for your any research area. Uh, I guess now we will go for uh, see here you can see the G the green line which is which you can see over here is uh, continuously minimum uh, number of satellites which are continuously monitored are greater than four so there won't be any problem while estimating the position okay this is the same thing okay now i will go for uh, g see this is the gns spectrum for uh, G, gps for glonass for galileo uh beidou navic system okay this is the gns signal spectrum for all the constellation now uh, see errors there are certain errors in this GNSS techniques and uh, which you all can work upon and uh, do a good research and make a product out of it. Okay. Ephemeris errors means errors of the errors which are in satellites. Okay. Satellite and clock receiver errors. It means the receiver which you are see the clock which uh, satellites are using are, are very high grade clocks cesium rubidium and hydrogen clocks but it is not possible for uh, anyone to design and develop or use that particular clock in a very low cost receiver because it is very clockly so at the user or at the receiver end there are certain clock errors which uh, can be mitigated can work on this area also now very interesting thing is this selective availability selective availability means i will tell you i guess all of you may be the fans of james bond maybe most of the answers would be yes so there was a movie of a james james bond golden golden eye okay in that it is clearly demonstrated about the selective ability availability what it means initially means not initially but gps start, when gps started once what they did there is a switch likewise we turn on our fan or light we have a switch there is a switch for this gps also for it means like uh, they can uh, turn off and they cannot provide the signals to the users it means we cannot navigate the position cannot be estimated so later on there came there came a rule that uh, you cannot turn off this likewise means you cannot turn off the selective availability if it does then nobody will be able to uh, acquire the position using the satellite signals okay uh, a recommendation for all of you do watch the golden eye movie james bond you will uh, easily come to know what it means it is clearly shown in that movie rest is multipath errors means uh, suppose you are traveling uh, between any uh, forest areas or any uh, densely populated area between high rise buildings then your satellite signals will be uh, multi getting multipath and it, it will be received by the user uh, your receiver antenna so you can work in this domain area also Ion ionospheric delay errors topospheric delay errors that uh, during the night time and daytime the this ionospheric uh, layers are changed and due to that layers the signal which is uh, received to our receiver it also the speed also and the signal contents are also varied so you can also work in this domain also tropospheric for estimating dry and wet component okay estimating dry is easy but estimating wet component is uh, uh, somewhat tedious 
if uh, you can if anyone of you have traveled abroad and you have seen that the weather forecast there they can very precisely say that uh, at this particular time there will be a rain but in india it is not possible why because there are certain parameters which need to be estimated okay and uh, and all of all about this our india lies above the equatorial range you can have a look in the map and and the weather conditions above the equatorial plane are <coughs> sorry not constant they are changing very rapidly so these changes also in, uh, introduced in the uh, this uh, technologies which we are using and the signals which we are receiving okay so on this errors also you can you uh, you can work upon this is ha huh, one this i will so, uh, show you uh, what is s bus s bus means satellite based augmentation system okay in india we are having s bus as gagan gps aided geo augmented services what it means suppose uh, you are traveling by air before consider yourself before 2 to 3 years and you are traveling from delhi to mumbai or from any any place to mumbai or from any place to delhi what happens if certain international flight is coming then your uh, uh, then your local national flight you are supposed to be turned move around till you get uh, uh, pro provision to land why it happens because the clocks are not synchronized your flight clocks are not synchronized so the priority is given first to the international flights so to overcome this what what uh, this dgca and uh, airport authority and all the aviation industry and this navigation uh, industry they collaborated and they started this uh, uh, giving the s bus signals what it means now uh, all the timing and synchronization synchronization will be uh, just if means it will be observed by the s bus signals it means that it means that your uh, uh, suppose for india gagan's gagan's the gagan technique is used and for that gagan technique the correction signals are transmit we are having three satellites and for that we are uh, or for that we are using uh, gps satellites at present but later on the irns uh, satellites correction signals will be used okay and using this uh, gagan technology precise take off and landing will be uh, done so this will help uh, reducing the cost of fuel and uh, cost of time okay now here this is the chart of uh, gnss position accuracy so likewise here you can see that uh, you, uh, what technology you can use and how much accuracy you can get suppose for using pseudo range you will get the accuracy of 10 meters if you want accuracy in the centimeter to minimal uh, millimeter level you have to go down with carrier face positioning okay this will be very useful for civil people architect people okay now uh, these are the techniques different techniques that that uh, you can use and you can determine your accuracy more precisely in centimeter level okay gagan one see these are certain field trials which i have done using uh, uh, the irnss navic receiver provided by space application center isro ahmedabad and uh, i have moved on uh, various parts of india and uh, i have seen that uh, i have also moved in forest area also and i have figured out that uh, the accuracy or the signal capturing capability of the receiver provided by navi uh, space application center isro ahmedabad the navic signals are far better than gps signals which i have concluded in this 5 years uh, till since i am working in this navic system okay and uh, in upcoming days uh, our mobile phone also uh, are integrated with uh, navic chips now at present you can use the redmi note 9 pro mobile phones they are having your uh, navic uh, en enable chipsets so there are certain mobile applications which you can look look into and you can see your 
mobile uh, satellite signals like navic gps and all other navigation satellites uh, systems in your mobile handset only so you don't have to go out and uh, search for uh, uh, this uh, costly devices costly gps or gnss devices those comes suppose like uh, topocon those comes in lakhs 50 60 lakhs but in now in 15k to 20k very low cost uh, gnss system is in is your mobile phone only so computer people it people can uh, work in this area they're developing new applications new apps for uh, navic system so every year the isro is conducting the smart hackathon and you can you, people might be working in this domain many of you might have been worked so this is an emerging uh, technology and you all people can work out in this domain this is a uh, pune maharashtra area which this is the forest area which i have covered huh. uh these are the research areas which you can work on for navic like atmospheric studies anosphic irregularities scintillations jamming spoofing carrier wave wideband jamming effect of tacan and other emi interference to navic system and development any sdr algorithms uh, then uh, i am navic signal monitoring carrier to node noise degradation in s band for s band nobody is working in our college one ma'am was working uh, you all can work in this domain but you will have to have the s band receiver for navic system then simulator for navic where you can work on so these are the research areas for navic which you can work upon i guess i have covered many uh, things but though uh, certain things are left out uh, gtu is planning to go for a uh, workshop for gnss and i guess we can cover up more in that workshop so it is uh, all from my my side if anyone is having any doubts you can ask me rudhi uh, rudhika ma'am from my side the presentation is over if yes, anyone is yes. doubt they can uh, ask this is a really an amazing station sir i must say and uh, yes, participants sir. do you have any question then you can uh, unmute your mic and ask to sir and sir we will uh, arrange such more sessions in future yes, sir, sir sure. uh, there is one question from uh, participant side yes is it in chat box I, they can yes, write yes. no issue in chat box <laughs> Uh, which software i used for simulation simulation uh, it is provided by the software was provided by space application center isro and uh, uh, it is pro uh, do have the propriety and uh, actually we have signed an mou so i cannot uh, uh, tell more about that thing but it is provided by space application center isro on the one any more questions any more question from participants no no ma'am okay if anybody having a question then you can unmute your mic and ask to sir yes i shall provide my contact details also or you can take from gt also uh, if you have any query you can ask or you can mail also i will give answers no issue okay sir thank you so much Thank you, thank you so much, ma'am. So, sir, thank you so much for such a wonderful and informative session, uh, which covered the topics like uh, satellite navigation positioning system, various parameters of GNSS, status of navigation satellite system during the October 2020, then reference system, GPS space segment, satellite and receiver clock errors, augmentation system uh, with demo. So, thank you so much, sir, for such a wonderful session. and i'm sure that participants are now aware with the content which was delivered in this session and this session will be definitely fruitful for them so thank you all participants for paying attention throughout this session thank you all thank you so much now thank you me. can leave the meeting okay thank you so much ma'am thank you ma'am thank, okay, thank you thank you